Okay, in this video I'm going to discuss kinetic versus thermodynamic control in organic reactions. So here I've got some reaction profiles. We've got G, the free energy of the system, versus the reaction coordinate. So for a typical reaction we have reactants here, so A plus B, and then they'll react together to go through some kind of transition state and form products, let's call them C plus D. And when we look at this, there's a couple of important parameters. Firstly, to get to that transition state there, we have to go through some kind of energy difference. And we term this the activation energy, E subscript A. Okay, and the activation energy tells us something about the rate of the reaction or the kinetics. Now, the other important parameter is the change in the free energy between the reactants and the products. So the change in free energy tells us uh, which of the two is more stable, the products or the reactants. So the delta G is a thermodynamic parameter. Now, if we have a set of reactants that can react in a couple of different ways to give more than one set of products, then we can have different energy profiles for those two different types of reactions. So if we have, uh, first off, A plus B going through a transition state down to products C plus D, that could be one reaction profile. But we may have a different one where we have A plus B going through a different transition state to give a different set of products at a different energy level. Now this one is fairly straightforward. You can see that the activation energy to go to E and F is lower than to go to C and D, and therefore the rate at which E and F is formed is faster than C plus D. Also, E and F is more, uh, they're more stable than C and D, and so therefore this red one here is both the thermodynamic and the kinetic product. Okay, things get a little bit more interesting when we have uh, different profiles. So for example, what if we start off with our reactants, and then uh, one pathway goes through an energy profile like this to give us one set of products. And then the other possibility goes through a lower activation energy barrier, but gets to less stable products. So what, how do we think about this particular situation? Well, this one here, E plus F, we're going to call that the kinetic product. And that reaction, uh, if we conduct it right, we can make the reaction be under kinetic control. This one we're going to call the thermodynamic product, and we can get to that product by using conditions of thermodynamic control. So to get the kinetic control, we'll have an irreversible reaction so that we cannot get the equilibrium established and so we can't get to the more thermodynamically favorable product. And therefore, this will be governed by the um, lowest activation energy. So the transition state that has the lowest energy uh, will be the one that is uh, easier to achieve and therefore will lead to the predominant product under kinetic control. To get thermodynamic control, we're going to use uh, higher temperatures or conditions that will make the reaction reversible.
Okay, if we get this reaction being reversible, we're going to get initially the faster product to form will be E plus F. But if we have enough energy, when we sometimes collide these two molecules, we'll get over that larger activation energy and down to the more stable product. And these will uh, be in equilibrium if we have a reversible reaction and we'll have more of the more stable compound with the uh, lower value of G or the bigger difference between the starting material and the product, the delta G. Okay, that's all I wanted to say about kinetic versus thermodynamic control. It comes up in all sorts of places within organic chemistry and it's a really important concept to master. Thank you.